We are, are doing building a stock advisor using Copilot today, using generative AI. And we will, next two weeks, we'll be doing a small series on, on working with PyTorch. You can use PyTorch to build neural nets and do machine learning. And uh, it's all prompt and en engineered. Every bit of it is prompt engineered. Not a bit of it is uh, written by hand. And so you're going to get a good dose on how to prompt engineer code like no nobody you can believe. And I, I'm actually so impressed because I immediately went in and said, give me the MNIST, if you know that's one of the initial uh, machine learning projects, and it just coded the whole thing, put it in a stream of interface, and I could interact with it and change the epochs, and it printed out a Matplotlib graphic. All worked right out of the box just by telling it what to do. This is just, un for me, unbelievably fun. All right, with that said, uh, AI is like the invention of electricity. It's not going away. And uh, they say, well, 50% of uh, Fortune 500 Fortune 500 companies are using it, and they're getting a 150% increase in work output. And my comment to that, if that's all they're getting, it's not worth it. And you're going to find out today that that number is a lot higher than 150%. Matter of fact, a recent study that was done by Dentons. Dentons is like one of the largest law firms in the world. Now, that's the number of lawyers. As far as revenues, it is number six. But as far as number of lawyers, it's the largest in the world. And it would take their lawyers four hours to prepare for court. And they'd be going through documents and be exhausted. And they needed a new way to do that. And they expedited that process. And of course, they built a RAG or vector database. They put a thing in. They called it the Fleet AI. And now, using this type of technologies, GPT-4, Metaloma 2, they are now doing that same amount of work in five minutes. And not only are they doing it in five minutes, they're not exhausted, right? They're invigorated. <laughs> they're empowered to do more. And as suddenly you see, they're getting like a almost a 5,000% efficiency. And I got to tell you, with AI, some of these numbers go as high as 10,000% efficiency. Uh, NASA has shown this uh, with their ice cap melt. Basically, they used to manually measure ice cap melt, melt. Now they actually do it with AI, and they're getting a 10,000% efficiency on that. So you can expect these extreme numbers. We have been in the about last year and a half, the age of the large language model. We, this year, we are entering into the age of the device. And uh, you're going to see all this on glasses and and the recent Microsoft build 2023. They just 2024. They just announced the Copilot PC. I just pre-ordered my Copilot to PC today. It has a CPU, it has a GPU, and it has an MPU, a neural network processor, and it can process 40 trillion instructions per second. And what's so cool about this particular machine is that. Many times as a developer, we have to do work on our, our, go up to the cloud to do work and bring it back down. So our data is passing back and forth and can be subject to man in the middle. But with the MPU on the laptop itself, you can do all your neural net processing on that, on that uh, computer itself. So I'll be getting it and I'll be demoing it when it comes. Should, should, they should be shipping June 20th. So I'm very excited about that. Right, with that, we'll start our icebreaker real quick. Uh, and I like this icebreaker, but I'm going to retire it after this. I've used it so many times in some of my uh, Microsoft classes. But basically, we imagine that you're in the price is right. And you have a choice of door number one, door number two, or door number three. And you're going to choose one, and you're going to tell me what's behind it. And be creative. And so I, I introduce people to what's something called temperature. When zero, that means the temperature is the system's not creative. And when it's one, it's like hallucinating. Now, we used to call hallucination a uh, a a broken a, a a fault or a bug. Now we call it a feature. So if you're a doctor and you're doing surgery, you don't want any hallucination. You'll set your temperature to zero. But if you're a creative writer, you might go up to 0.75 because you want to get something in there. Probabilities that you weren't expected, things that weren't expected, twist and that were not expected. So what I want you to do is and I see. So the large language model has no problem creating knowledge or imagining what's behind those doors. So I want you to turn your temperature up. And I want you to imagine what you would want between door number one, two, or three. Tell me what door number two, one, two, or three, and what's behind it. So go ahead and start typing in the chat. Come on, guys. Give me door number one, two, or three, and what's behind it. This is our icebreaker for today. With that said, if you want to try a Copilot, uh, you can go to Copilot Studio. I'm going to go ahead and put, start putting some links in the chat as we move along here. And that link will take you to this where you can try it. Now, you're going to need to have a business license to work, run the studio. You can register for 360 Business. Here's a link right here. And you can get a free trial for a month. So there you go. And um, 
Let me go ahead and put that in. I don't know why that didn't go. Hold on. Let me copy that link. And this is where you can go get a free trial for a month and try it out. Now, I have a, 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 a LLC, so I use my LLC. So if you're in Kentucky and you're a veteran like I am, you get a free LLC. And mine's called Quantum AI, and I use that to get my um, to get my copilot. So there you have it. So once you get copilot, co you'll you'll go log in, and it'll walk you through a screen where you put your business email in. It won't take a Gmail. It needs a business email. And you'll walk through that, and you can sign up for Copilot Studio. So we're actually using Copilot Studio. Like I said, there's many Copilots, and this is what Copilot Studio looks like. Let's go take a look. But here's my Copilot Studio right here, and it's come up. And you can see I've been experimenting with a lot of different Copilots. It's been it's a lot of fun. Now I got to tell you, my approach to um, coding has completely changed since I've started uh, doing prompt engineering. And now I just see it as something fun and something to dive into. And there's just an infinite amount of possibilities. Like if I get some code and I don't know what it means, I just say, explain the code to me and it will explain it to me. So there's a lot. So I think of it like being an elephant tied to a stake. For 30 years, I've been told I can't do things. And an elephant tied to a stake doesn't know it can't pull the stake out because it was tied to the stake when it was young and learned it couldn't pull away. We all need, need to learn. We can pull away. We can do things we never thought we could do before. And so using these type of technologies, you can. It's very easy. All you come over here and you head, say, hey, create a copilot. And when you hit create copilot, you have several templates that you can choose from. And they have templates coming. So they're putting a lot of work into this. And this is going to be their flag, um, their flagship for building custom GPTs. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's, it parallels to custom GPTs. And then we're going to show you the parallel between the two today and how they kind of match up. So if you've been building custom GPTs like I have, and you start working with Copilot, you go, wow, this is really, really very similar. Now, if you don't want to use a template, you can just hit create a new Copilot. And here, just like a custom GPT, it'll try to lead you along and try to help you build your copilot. Now, I found out that when I use a custom GPT, it's a lot nicer to me than this is, but it does take some skill with working with this. But they're actually patterning this after the same design as custom GPT. And now if you look over here, just like a custom GPT, there's a configuration file. So if you click on that configuration file, you can actually skip the you know verbiage of trying to have it tell you what to do and put in your description and put in your instruction set. And then you can add knowledge. So when you click on knowledge, there's all types of things you can add. You can add a public website and we'll show you how to use a copilot to search a public website today and how to deploy it to a uh, hugging face. You can have it on SharePoint. And so you can continually be updating your SharePoint files and be searching that SharePoint file. But you need a, you need a um, uh, uh, authorization for this. Here, it won't let you upload files right yet, but once you instantiate, then you can upload files. And then uh, a Dataverse, Microsoft Fabric, and all the other uh, tools are available once you crank this thing up. So the whole Microsoft ecosphere is being wired into Copilot. Pretty amazing stuff. All right, let's go back to the slide deck. You've seen the, uh, the initial um, uh, program. We'll be building a few things today. There is that uh, that once again just create a button and you're right you're going to build your copilots like that so it, it's much like custom GPTs if you've been building custom GPTs you have now a place where you can build copilots and that copilot wires into the entire ecosystem of Microsoft. With that said, I do a comparison here on this slide to uh, custom GPT and copilot. You see custom GPT is trying to walk you through in that creative mode, so copilot's also trying to walk you through in the creative mode. Then you have this configuration mode here. Custom GPTs are allowing you to put in your configuration and also upload knowledge. And in the same way, Copilot is allowing you to put in a description and instructions and also try to upload knowledge. I went, I went, hallelujah. I mean, a lot of people are going, man, these all look the same. I'm so glad if you're a developer and you're seeing the same pattern over and over again, it's easy to move from one system to another. Now, what does not work is I had built a um, multilingual simulator. Let me put the link in here, and I'm going to go there and take a look at that simulator real quick and show you what's not working yet. So I built this custom GPT exam simulator, and we'll just go to random question. And what hit, and it is for the AWS machine learning exam. I, in my lifetime, I never thought I would build an exam simulator. Here I am building them because the technology allows me to do so. And it's all completely prompt engineered. I did not write a single line of code here. And the first thing it's going to ask me, oh, it's going to give me a, an exam question in Spanish. Isn't that nice? 
And then I can choose what, so it, it's a multilingual exam. Not only is it an exam simulator, it's multilingual. So I said, well, let's see. And maybe I want a question, exam question in English. So let me go ahead and ask it to give me one in English. So I'll go English. I'll just type in English. And it's going to give me a question in English. Isn't that nice? There you go. And these are pretty hefty questions. These are questions that you would see on the exam. So I made it pretty good. I said, good luck with your study. So it finished up for me real quick here. So just taking a look on how this is built, we'll just take a look at it. And we'll, then I want to discuss what's not working that's working here and, and what I'm expecting to work in the future. So let's go here real quick. So I have about 48 custom GPTs that I've built. And if you come down here and hit explore GPTs, then you can go to my GPTs, and this is my custom uh, simulator. And if you look at that, the way that's built, you have a create mode where you can create, but you have configure, and that's where every, all the business side is. And if you open that up, that's pretty much just coding the whole thing, but not using syntactical coding that we're all used to. It's using words. And the random question was right here. And so when I copy this, and all it says, all that really is, it says, okay, when a user presses the button random question, go to step one and ask them what language they want to do this in. And then from the uh, knowledge, so I put a whole set of questions into the knowledge. It says, pull a random question and also give the options in the language that was selected. Then ask the user if it's A, B, C, or D, and then tell them why it's correct or incorrect. And then ask them if they want another question. If so, go back to the step two. If not, go to six and summarize. So what's amazing here, I've actually put in an if statement but not with syntactical language, but with words. Now, I would expect to be able to go and cut and paste this into um, Copilot and for it to work in its configuration, right? But it doesn't. And it does accept the, uh, the, the, the knowledge file. I can upload files to the system, but I have to do a little bit more work to get the same thing out of, uh, out of Copilot that I do out of um, uh, a custom GPT. However, there are other places that it works really well, and that is searching the web. So let's take a look at an example of searching the web. And what I have is next week, you're going to be seeing the PyTorch hands-on course. And by the way, the entire course has been uh, prompt engineer, even the outline. All this was written by ChatGPT. I just went in and said, look, I I'm a beginner. I need to learn PyTorch. Now, that's not true, <laughs> but I said that. I'm a beginner. I need to learn PyTorch. Give me a course starting with the basics and stepping all the way through, and that's hands-on. And so it gives me like 10 or 12 hands-on exercises that I can actually program using uh, 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 prompt engineering that will walk through. But it would really be nice if I could have an assistant here. Maybe uh, there is a website out there, right? Like that has all the documentation of PyTorch on it. And maybe I could put that assistant on that PyTorch site so if you guys got stuck on something, as opposed to fumbling around or trying to figure it out, you could just go into the assistant and ask it a question. And I can do that using Copilot. So let's step through that process. Is there's many ways to build a Copilot. We showed you that you can create, you can use configuration, but you can also use a template. So what we're going to do, we're going to build a site that talks to um, the uh, documentation of PyTorch. So let me go ahead and grab this link right here and open up my Copilot a Studio. So going back to Copilot Studio, and I'm going to hit Create. And as opposed to going to New Copilot, I'm going to hit a template, and let's use a web Q&A. Cool. Now I can start changing it here. So I'm going to go search um, PyTorch. What do you think? All right, that's good. And then it's going to give me a description. What does it do? Well. This uh, Copilot searches um, PyTorch documentation and provides answers. Um, and then what does it do? Uh, maintain a polite and pro professional uh, uh, tone while uh, answer, let's say answering questions, answering questions from the PyTorch documentation Okay. Okay, cool. And we're going to scroll down here and we're just going to put a link in here. And it's got the Microsoft link in here. I don't want that. So I can delete that. And then I can add a link. And it says here, you can click on public link. So let's paste our link in there. There you go. And you add it. And I, I like that link. And so we're going to add that. And now I have 
I'm, I'm going to create my copilot. And so what I now have is a copilot that can search a website. Isn't that pretty cool? A copilot can talk to anything. It can talk to a website. It can talk to uh, a SharePoint site. It can talk to a, a file. Just anything. So it's search search by a uh, pie torch. Tor torch. And so one thing I can do is it's all set up here. So I can actually test it, which is pretty nice. So I can hit test and let's see if it works. All right. All right. It says, hello, I'm a website Q&A co-pilot. Please ensure the knowledge source on the left pointing to your website so I can provide customized answers based on your website content. Once ensured that I have a knowledge um, website, and there it is. So let's ask it a question. What is a tensor? Cross your fingers, okay? You know, I hope the demo guys will be good to me today. It says a, tor a torch tensor is a multidimensional matrix containing elements of a single data type. Torch defines tensor types with various data types, such as 32-bit floating point, 64 floating point, 16-bit floating point, complex numbers, integers, booleans, and quantized integers. And what's even great, and I love this feature of Copilot, it's got the link. And it'll take me to that section in the document. There you go, and I can just continue to learn. Isn't this amazing? Oh, wow, I'm just so excited. So at this point, I can publish it, but I, I want to make sure that um, the authorization is correct. So let's go back to where we were. All right, so here we go. And you can see it's got a number of, of uh, tabs here. One is knowledge, topics. We won't get into topics a whole lot today, but we actually we steer away from topics. We will see a, an example of it as we move on. We steer away from it a little bit because we have the power of the generative AI. So we will touch on it briefly. We've got analytics. We have uh, channels and channels where you would publish. Right now, I'm, I'm only publishing to Microsoft Teams, but I'd like to publish to a demo site and I'd like to publish to a custom website. So let me go ahead and see if I can do that. And what I need to do is change the authorization. So I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to authorization, security. And in security, <clears throat> I'm going to choose authorization and I'm going to say no authorization. So the, the, be aware that once you do that, anyone can, once this is posted, anyone can access this copilot. All right, with that said, I'll hit save. Because I'm going to build that copilot chat companion here in a moment. And I believe that we're good. And when that's done, I'm going to go and try to publish again. So let's go back to our copilot and let's publish. All right. And I'm going to take a look at my channels and see what I have now. And you can see now I'm published to the demo site and to the custom website. So let's hit, hit demo here. And I can actually um, introduce your copilot and its purpose. So uh, my uh, uh, I search um, uh, for uh, information about PyTorch. And then uh, type things you might add. What is a tensor? What is a, is a tensor? Right. And this is what you kind of do with chat GDP. It's like conversation starters if, is what you're putting in here. So same thing with custom GPT uh, when you build one. What is a tensor? Um, uh, 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 what is a neural net? Net, you know. Um, what is PyTorch? Just some what ifs. What is PyTorch? Stuff like that for, right, for now. You could ask more detailed questions about the code itself, but that's good. So at that point, you've got that. And let's go ahead and save that. And there's a link here. So I'm going to copy that link and I'm going to paste it into a browser. So let me go ahead and paste that link into a browser. And lo and behold, there's my website. Isn't that amazing? And so I can just type in here, what is the neural net? Let's see if it knows. It says, hello, I'm your uh, website Q&A. A, a neural net is, a short, is short for neural network. It is a computational model inspired by structure and functioning of the human brain. Absolutely. We have moved from zeros and ones to multidimensional vectors. And now this, these computer systems are thinking like humans think in multidimensional space. We have human intelligence in a box. And once again, you can click on that link and it'll take you to a recurrent neural network, RNN, and show you all the math and code that you could ever want. But what's also good about that is if you need to uh, prompt engineering some, something, it's there. You don't have to come up with this because it's there. And so when you build something, it just builds it for you because it's there. And so everything has changed in the world of coding and you guys should be aware of that. So that's your first example. Now I'll do another example. I actually put this up in Hugging Face so let me show you how I did that. I won't go through all the coding, 
because we've done a bit here so far. But let me go back to the where I need to be. If I go back to my PyTorch, and take a look at that real quick. And if I go back to my channels, that's where all my stuff is published, I can come down here to custom website. And I have this doc right here. And if I put this doc in a um, website, that will be my chat bot. And so I've done that on Huggy Face. I'm going to show that to you. And then I'm going to show a more advanced example of this in a moment. So I'm going to come along here and I'm going to actually let me show you. Um, let me show you a simple example and then I'll show you a more advanced example. Because we have plenty of time to finish up with what we need to do today. Okay, here's an example where I actually put Copilot in an advisor. And all I do is I go to Hugging Face and I actually create um, a uh, HTML page. And all I do is put that doc file I just copied in that HTML file page. That's it. And this is an example of what we're about to build at the end. This is the financial advisor. And so if you come along here and ask it a question about stocks, it's going to give you the answer. So I can come in here and say, what is the price of gold? You can see now I'm out on the web. I'm in Hugging Face and I'm running my little chat bot. And then you can reformat everything to fit on the page. We're about to do that real quick. Oh, there you go. The price of gold. There it is. And you can click on that and go to an article all about gold. I just love this because if you're ever doing a type of financial analysis, which I do, you're going to be going to these sites and learning more and more and more. And for me, it's just fascinating. So with that said, we're going to get off this site real quick and we're going to go take a look at our next, uh, get back on our slide deck and take a look at our next piece. So we built this. We built this um, web search for PyTorch. And then we showed you uh, that we're going to do the same thing, right? Uh, but hold on, I need to prompt engineer it now. But before I get there, I, um, yeah, we're going to go, I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Let me slow down. So now let's take this and prompt engineer this so we can get it onto a page. So let's go ahead and take a look at the page that I have. And so I have my outline. And I'm going to show you how I did it. And in my outline, I prompt engineered this course that we'll be learning next week. And it has 10 hands-on exercises. You'll learn the first five next week. Well, I'll show you how to prompt engineer them. And I'll discuss, I'll discuss everything from introduction to tensors to convolution of neural networks, CNNs. But I don't like all of that. I'd like to have a little prompt uh, on the screen. So if I had a question, I could ask it. So here's what that's, that's going to look like. Here's your outline. And here's your prompt that you can ask questions. Now, we've already seen this and experimented with this. But how do I get? how do I prompt engineer this? So all you have to do to prompt engineer this is go grab this code. And so you can go to files. All this is open for you guys to look at. I, I actually publish all my code open on the web. And if you go to pages, you can go, go to the first page and you can just copy this code. And then you can take this code into chat GPT and you can say, okay, um, take the code below and split it into two columns. Put the outline on the left and the chat bot on the right. And then what you do, you're going to paste this code on the left. Low here. And you're going to go down and you say on the right. And then you're going to go take that uh, um, system that you just wrote. And we're going to go back one. Excuse me. I think I got off the screen here real quick. Let me go back one. And you're going to copy this, right? And it just love, it just eats code. And you're going to go back to your chat GPT and you're going to paste this in. And that's it. It's going to write the code for you. That's all I had to do. And now it's building a streamlet with one on one side. That's your column one, you see. It's giving you your outline. And at the bottom, you're going to see your column two and an iframe. All right. While we are uh, doing this, are there any questions? And there's your column two, and it puts it in an iframe. 
And if you take this and you paste this in, you will get what's in Course with Chat. There you go. Extremely powerful. I mean, you can actually code as fast as you can think. All right, so we're going to head toward the last piece because we have 20 minutes. I want to give you guys a little bit of time for questions. And what we're going to do now is going to explain why I would be interested in building a stock advisor. When you're trading financials, you just don't want to trade financials on, on, on sentiment. You just don't want to trade financials on financial advice. You just don't want to trade financials on what the... Um, what the um, uh, the, the candlesticks are looking like. You want to have several indicators that you're looking at. And when all the indicators are green, then you trade. And when they're all red, you sell, right? You buy, buy or sell. So that's kind of how you want to do that. And so what, one of the reasons I'm building the stock advisor, it's one indicator. I'm going to get a green or a red based on what's in that on a particular stock that I might want to sell or buy. And then same thing. I'm going to do a sentiment analysis on a chat room. I'm watching those chat rooms. So if it's sentiment is negative, but it's, everything else is green, I'm not going to I'm not going to sell, right? Or I'm not going to buy, depending on what, the, what what is involved. So I got see that Josh has a put something in the chat here. And Josh said this might be off topic, but I feel like GPT answers my questions in a crazy verbose way, and does not cut into the details I need. Likely garbage in, garbage out. But I often ask technical questions. And it says so much basic info and suggestions. So basically, just to answer your question, Josh, um, it all has to do with the Mechanical Turk. So uh, what a lot of people don't realize is on the on the back end of all this, there are humans in the loop. And so whenever someone gets something like that and they do a thumbs down, then that thumbs down actually goes to a whole group of people that begin analyzing that prompt and telling the, the, the uh, chat what it got wrong. Now, let me just tell you that there are, are ways to talking to this when you prompt engineer that might be surprising to you. There's a lot of people that give very verbose um, prompts. You can see mine are very simple. But if you look at mine, I'm actually using something called implicit. I'm doing an implicit or an explicit, um, uh, what I'd call, way of talking to it so it knows who I am. For example, if I say write Python code that does this, I don't have to say you are a Python expert that knows all this stuff and you need to write this code for me. Because when I say write Python code that does this, it infers that. So there's a way of talking to this where you get where you don't necessarily have to write all these huge examples, right? And 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 if there's an issue with what's coming in and out, that model needs to be tuned and that and just put give it a thumbs down and it'll come to a mechanical Turk and they'll work on it and they'll and your responses will get better. And that's what actually happened when GPT 4.0 came out. I was it didn't seem that good, but then after a couple of weeks, their mechanical Turk had been working on it. These people in the loop and it just got better. So so just want to let you know that. So I mean, look at me. I just we just we just engineered a hundred lines of code. It worked perfectly. So that definitely wasn't garbage in and garbage out. But I I've been working with this for a while. I know how to talk to it. Good question, though. I really appreciate that quite a bit. All right. So one of the problems we have with the, building the financial advisor is that the um, system itself is limited to four websites. But there is a way around that. And the way around that is something called the custom AI search. This is the Bing search. So I'm going to put this in the uh, chat so you guys have this. But what this allows you to do, and this is just an amazing service. So I want to bring it up so you guys can see it. And I want to bring my version up. So let me bring my version up. It allows you to put in multiple websites and it will search those multiple websites for you. Now, let me go ahead and tell you what I did. And here's another example of a prompt. I didn't get garbage in and garbage out on this, uh, Josh. So let's take a look. So if I come along and go to this prompt and what I want is 10 websites that I can search, right? To get fine, you know, to find, let me put that, the prompt in. So it says, I need to find 10 sites that would uh, that I would go to to decide if I should invest buy or sell stocks, the, sh the sites should be free of free and searchable by a web scraper. Can you suggest 10? Now, as soon as I said invest, buy or sell stocks, that sets the intelligence level. I don't have to tell it I need you to be a professional stock advisor. As soon as I say buy and or sell stocks, it knows it needs to be that. It's going to infer what I need. And so as soon as I put that in there, it's going to give me 10 sites. Once again, however, we see that um, that uh, um, 
Copilot is limited to Foresight. So how do I get around that? Well, I use the uh, link I just put in there, Custom Search AI, which is the Bing Custom Search. Let's go there real quick. And let me tell you, I really love this service. And there's two reasons I love this service so much. And let me bring it up. And what I did is I took those 10 sites that I got off of chat GDP and I put in here, but look below. It's suggesting other sites. Oh, isn't that wonderful? So there's things that I might have missed or other sites I might be interested in that chat GDP didn't give back to me. And there they are. And I can look and search here as well. And then once you have all those sites, you put them in, then it will only search those sites. It's not going to search the whole web. It's just going to search those sites. And why it's so powerful, if you do a custom, like you're going to do like custom chat rooms, it'll only search those chat rooms. So you can actually hone into what you want to do with the system. And then once you do that, you go to, um, bring this up, you go to production. And in production, what they have is a configuration ID. Now, I obviously will have to change my configuration ID after this briefing. But you take that configuration ID and you're going to use that in your custom GPT. So now we're going to build that financial advisor. Now, to build that financial advisor, you're going to go through several steps. You're going to create a copilot. You're going to go to generative AI, and you're going to turn that on. And this is where you're not where you're not using topics. You're actually going to use the generative AI to search for you. You're going to change the security to um, no no authorization, so everyone can use it. Um, a topic. Oh, Josh just said you are asking better questions. I need to work on that. <laughs> Josh, you just stick around with me, okay? We're going to be trying to do this every week. So you stick around and keep coming. You'll be a professional prompt engineer before you know it. Gets in your blood. <laughs> Security will set that to no topics. Uh, topics, uh, we'll go to we'll go to topics, but we'll look at uh, conversational boost, which we get from setting the generative AI. Uh, we'll look at properties, and we're going to set the ID, the custom ID in properties, and then we're going to go to the channels demo, and we're going to test and publish. So we're going to do all this in about 10 minutes, and we'll be finished with our presentation today in that short of time. So let's go and do that. Let's go and bring up our, our chat GDP, or excuse me, our co-pilot. And let's get started by making a new copilot. Give me a moment. And I'm going to create a copilot. And I'll hit that new. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create. Hopefully, I won't make any mistakes here. <laughs> I, I, if you've been building custom GPTs, you just love this. I mean, it's it's so similar. And then what I want to do is once I'm there, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to uh, go to generative AI. And I want to set this to generate AI. That will give me the, what they call the conversational boost, where in, where it's searching for topics. And if it doesn't see one, it uses the large language model to search for you. And once I have the conversational boost set, I also can set um, down here, and it's not showing for here, but I typically can, can set, yeah, here we go. I can set uh, if I want high, medium, or low. And high means that it, it's going to give me less responses, but they're going to be more accurate. So in a sense, you're setting temperature, temperature zero here. Low would be a temperature of one, of, Z, of, of one, right? Where you could just, you get anything back. You don't want that. With that done, you're going to want to save this. Let's see, where's the save button? That will be the, here it is, right here. And once that's saved, we're going to go set our security. And so let's set security. And that way you can just put it out on the web, right? There you go. Anyone see it? I just, you know, I have such an appreciation for this because I've been in this business for like 30 years, right? And just to be able to do this so quickly, it's just totally amazing to me. I'm just, I just got to tell you, I'm just completely amazed. With that done, hopefully the security is right. Let's see if it's set still. Yep, security is right. We can go back to our co-pilot. And we can see, look at our topics and see if we've got a conversational boost. So it's in our topics and you should see conversational boost. So it is set. And then I can go down right here, I believe to the right place, hit edit. And I'm going to scroll down and edit. I'm going to look for my classic data. And in my classic data sources, I'm going to look for the websites. And I'm going to look for search public websites. And there is my search with custom being custom search. And that's where I'm going to put my ID in. And now it knows to go to those 10 websites that I told it to go to. And I want to make sure I save that. And I can test it here, which is wonderful. So it says, I am a co-pilot for a virtual assistant. Just so you are aware, I, I am sometimes wrong. So what is the price of gold? Let's see what it gives me. And 
it's real slow. And, and custom GPT is really fast. And I don't know if it's real slow because it's just a studio and it's not in the uh, cloud as production environment, but you can click on that and see we're getting back the same thing we got before. Oh, it's working well. So at this point, you can now publish it just like we publish, published the other one, right? So let's move back to our site, got off the link. Okay. I unfortunately got off my link, but that's okay. I'll just go back to Copilot. Here I am. So at this point, it's all done. I can now publish. And so when I publish, it's going to publish to all those various sites. And I can go look at channel and see if it's there and grab everything I need to do to do my work. And we did all of that in about five minutes. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> all right. With that said, we will publish. Let's take a look at channels. And there you go. You can go ahead and bring up your demo website and you can put in your, um, yeah, I am a, I am a stock advisor and uh, price of gold. And once again, these are like your conversation, conversational starters, gold, uh, Tesla, let's put Apple stock price, stuff like that. And just hit save. And when you do, here's the website right here. You can just copy that and put that in here. And there you go, Apple stock price. Let's click on that and see if we get an Apple stock price. You just built your financial advisor. Isn't this wonderful? I mean, this is amazing. This is amazing stuff. And you click on that and that will take you to uh, their prices. And so you can look, see what's happening. And, and, and this could be one indicator. You can actually write some code around this using a custom GPT or actually using um, uh, a co-pilot. And you'll write some code around this to tell you if you should buy or, buy or sell, depending on the characteristics of these curves. And so they're looking for this breakpoint, you see. And when this breakpoint hits, they know the physics of that. And, and they've been watching the chat room, so they know they're going to get a plus or minus. They're going to know when to sell or buy. And so uh, what typically you're doing all this analysis, right? And it could take you a long time. And you've got your chat systems, you've got your automated systems selling and buying for you and making your profit. Now, once the system figures out how to make a profit, then the market will see that and adjust. And so you're always building systems, right? To, in a sense, figure out how to beat the market. And there's so many computer systems now working on this, you know, right? uh, use it, being used to trade in the market that I think more than, uh, oh, about a huge percentage. I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't remember what the percentage was, but I know it's above 50% of trading is being done electronically now by, by bots. So it's, it's competitive. All right, with that said, um, let's see where we are on the slide deck. So with that, with that said, what we did, we we, we created a, a, a co-pilot. We generated an, a, we used it, we, we changed it to a generative AI. So it would hit the topics, but then would go to our large language models to search our website. We opened up our security. We uh, went to conversational boosts and set the properties, the custom ID. That uh, We looked at the channel demos and we published. So up and running. As promised. So with that said, uh, you saw the, the site running, so that's fine. Uh, once again, the deployment options, it's it's Microsoft's whole ecosphere, right? So that's what's so amazing. And, and a, lot, a lot of people like to say, like, for example, um, you know, get some new bot out there, a new logic language one says it kills chat GDP or it kills Microsoft or it kills AWS. Now, each one of these guys have their ecosphere. They have their operation, right? Google has Google Sheets and, and, and Gmail and YouTube and it's it's peace, right? And and Microsoft has that whole office suite, you know, and all the things it can connect to. And Amazon obviously is, is, is it has Claude. And, and all these other uh, pieces it's working with. So, you know, not one kills the other. They just, they, they all have their own ecospheres. Eventually you're going to be running multi-cloud anyway. So uh, get used to, to learning all of these technologies and how they work in these different systems. This uses um, the topics that we, we used to see. We used to build topics many years ago when we were building chatbots for Microsoft. But you notice that Gemini is using Dialogflow. So saying they took that same, it's their same engine and they put their large language model on top of it. So that's how these things are running. So real quick here, I do have a, a, an exercise for you. I went and, and I went into ChatGDP and I said, provide 10 financial chat rooms that are free and scrapable that I can get sentiment analysis on to give me an indicator to sell or not sell. So you see, Josh, I'm just being real specific. Now I can get more specific and the more specific you are, the more it's going to get back from you. 
uh, and the less you are, then you're going to get right. You could get some junk. Now, I just want to say something. When these mechanical Turks, these people in the background are judging these um, these um, uh, uh, prompts, there's two two real things they they, they, like, they they like to judge. One is content versus style. You can have style that's really good, but no content. I think that's what you were talking about. Uh, and so basically, if you have a content of six and a style of three, you're going to get a six. But if you have a content of three and a, a style of six, you're still going to you're going to get a three because content rules. And I think what happens is you watch these systems get better as these people in the background begin to judge your prompts and what they should have given back and they get their thumbs down. And they start working on it. And as they judge them, they get better. So just be, be aware there's a people element in the background that's actually working with these models as well. So when they first come out, they need to be tuned. All right, and there's people in the background helping with that tuning. All right, with that said, um, a ton of links for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and paste them all in so you guys can have these links. Please join my LinkedIn if you have not. And uh, I love to uh, answer questions. So if you have a question that comes up, you want to talk to me, please do.